Well, ladies and gents, this is just then. The Mortal Kombat sequel has been greenlit. I know there's a weird pause there. Mortal Kombat is getting a sequel. Uh, we had rumours of this. Nothing was confirmed. They waited a long time to announce this. I don't know why. I'm sensing maybe because HBO Max and Warner Brothers are losing a lot of their staff. I mean, you know, Legendary has taken the Godzilla Titan Kaiju series off to Apple TV rather than HBO Max. It kind of feels like maybe they're floundering and they're like, sequel. I don't know. Not that I begrudge a sequel. I'm game for a sequel. Why not? Let's have a look. Uh, New Line is moving forward with Mortal Kombat sequel. Moon Knight scribe Jeremy Slater. Scripting. That's good. Good news. That's great news. This is an exclusive to Deadline, hence why we've got the Deadline article. Uh, also, ladies and gents, subscribe. Hit the like. Uh, follow me over on Twitter and Instagram. Cheers. So, uh, exclusive New Line is getting back into a fighting stance on a sequel to Mortal Kombat, the action-adventure film based on the blockbuster video game franchise. The studio has hired Jeremy Slater to write Mortal Kombat 2. Uh, so Slater was the head writer on Marvel Disney series Moon Knight, which stars Oscar Isaac, Ethan Hawke, and Gaspard Uliel, uh, although, you know, R.I.P., uh, unfortunately, died last week in a skiing accident, uh, which is, I mean, that's, yeah, like, tragic, genuinely. So Slater is also writing uh, to direct Thread for Screen Gems with James Wan and Atomic Monster producing. So this is like, this guy is is slated. Ha ha ha, Jeremy Slater. Uh, is slated as basically like the next big thing, you know? And now studios do this, they go, he's it. He's the one. We're going we're gonna to snare him up. Because that's what happens, you know? If they prove a little bit of success or people think that they're going to be the big thing, every studio scrabbles to get him. And this is kind of sounds like that basically which is not a bad thing it's not a bad thing so his recent scripting credits include the netflix uh, 21 laps film uprising with travis knight directing uh, and adapted stephen king's the tommy knockers for universal and james wan and he also developed the umbrella academy for netflix so he i mean he he's he's done quite a lot of stuff um yeah uh, and he's co-showrunner uh, of the exorcist on fox i haven't watched that i can't imagine that's particularly great so, based on the Ed Boon and John Tobias created video game Phenomenon, the last film, which was released in April 2021 during the pandemic, simultaneously in theatres and on HBO Max, opening number one at the box office, which is not, like, it wasn't a surprise that it did that. People starved of content. Uh, it wasn't a bad film. Some dumb stuff here and there. But, like, all, all in all, yeah, fine. Like, I enjoyed it, and I'm keen to see more. So, uh, it was ranking among the top featured titles ever on HBO Max since the platform launched, which is... Pretty crazy. It did like quite good numbers uh, on HBO Max, which is like great. Like more for it. Again, power to it. So the film was directed by Simon McQuaid, who produced with Todd Gardner, uh, E. Bennett Walsh, and James Wan. And in last year's action fest, an MMA fighter sought out Earth's greatest champions in order to stand against the enemies of Outworld. It was a battle for the universe. No other deals are locked in at this point. Lewis Tan, Jessica McNamee, and Josh Lawson, Joe Taslim, uh, Me Head Brooks. Luli Lin and uh, Tadanobu Asano headed the car. So we, we don't actually know anyone else that's turning up for this. We don't know who's going to be directing it. It's just looking like it is Jeremy Slayer writing it. But good. I mean, you know, we'd heard rumours that this was moving forwards. Funnily enough, actually from the previous writer. <laughs> uh, not this writer. So that's kind of funny uh, because they were talking about, yeah, like where where do you go? Where do we move things forward? But I think like a broader discussion, let me shuffle in over here, sort this uh, focus out. Um, I think a broader discussion needs to be had over why they've suddenly announced this, and I think it comes at a time where content is a premium, right? Like content is a premium. They need IPs. Now this isn't to say that this is going to be released on HBO Max. We don't know, uh, but New Line is a part of. You know, Warner Brothers like a subsidiary company, um, if I remember rightly. So the likelihood of this appearing somewhere is quite high. But, you know, I can't imagine they're going to want to do this because they make quite a lot of money, to be fair, uh, at the box office. Quite a significant amount more than what I think that they thought they were going to. Uh, and, you know, you've got a good cast there. You could do something really, really decent with it. But I think, like I say, I think this is purely just because... Um, 
yeah, they're sort of floundering a little bit. But I'll be intrigued to see where this goes from here, because of course Warner Brothers is merging uh, with Discovery, isn't it? Discovery? Um, now where that puts the company and their properties and how Discovery chooses to move things forward remains to be seen. Uh, especially for things like their streaming platforms. But this comes at an odd time. Again, I firmly believe that this is because they just, they're missing out on content. Legendary uh, had a legendary almost legal battle with Warner Brothers because... Well, they threatened they threatened legal battle because they were like, you can't release our stuff on HBO Max. You, you can't. You, you blocked us getting money from Netflix, from Apple, uh, whoever it was. I think it was Netflix and maybe Apple at the same time. Uh, and, and they threatened legal action because they both released June and... Uh, Godzilla uh, versus Kong on HBO Max, and now we're seeing the fallout from that, which is, you know, Legendary. Warner Brothers is a distributing partner with Legendary, but they put up a significant amount of money, 25%. It's a significant amount. It's not a lot, but it's a significant amount, you know, in the grand scheme of things. And uh, Legendary, when they were shopping out their Godzilla Titan Kaiju series, uh, Warner Brothers, from what we can tell, weren't even really in the mix. They didn't get a look in. Apple TV. You'd think if they have a, a long-standing relationship that they want to proceed with moving forward, you'd think that Legendary would want to nurture that by giving Warner Brothers the benefit of the doubt by saying, oh, you know, you're not bidding quite as much as Apple TV, but you're saying that we'll work together long-term. That's fine. Uh, but, I, yeah, that's not the case because Apple TV's got it. And the, the moral of all of this is quite literally, I think, Warner Brothers. They, they don't really have a lot going for them at the moment. And I know that's quite an outlandish statement, but they don't. Like, there's not a lot of properties that are coming out under Warner Brothers that you go, yeah, I'm really amped for that. Uh, and there were a few which could have been great. Um, but I think this is one of them because, as in one that they've announced and moving forward with seriously, i.e. getting Jeremy Slater, uh, because, you know, it was a big deal for them. They seemed to get, like, a good amount of traction from it. Good subscribers, actually, on HBO Max and also theatre money. So, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts. Let me know down below in the comment section. Um, any and all thoughts, let me know. If you're new here, please do hit subscribe. Give the video a like and please do share it. Uh, hit subscribe on my second channel. It's in the description box. It's a vlog slash car channel. You might like it. You might not. But check it out uh, nonetheless. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, take care.